Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 83 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on October 12th, 2021. How you folks doing? Man, I hope you're doing well. I, I, I am also doing well. But I'm very, very busy. <laughs> very busy with some research stuff for work, actually. Um, some some kind of crazy research project stuff. And so I'm, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit, but hopefully I'll get it all done. Uh, sometimes there are not as many hours in the day as you would like. That is just how things tend to work out. You know, I, I actually, I do want to tell you guys, I am pretty burned out right now. I am, I'm hanging in there for, a, for the moment, but don't be surprised if I need a break soon. I'm, I've been going pretty hard uh, between Pew Science and work and other stuff. And so I, I actually, I didn't work at all this weekend and I'm still exhausted. Like, and that's how I know it's like when th- that happens and I, I'm telling you, I know myself what's happening is mental fatigue. Like it, it's like this weird thing that I get. I actually don't notice it, but I'll, I'll start slowing down. Um, and it's, I mean, I've, I've been hitting the gym, uh, you know, I'm, I'm eating right. Um, I even been doing some cardio, taking my vitamins. I mean, I feel good, but I'm just mentally, <laughs> I'm, my brain, I think it's, <laughs> I think I need an oil change. I don't know. It's, um, so yeah, I'm going to have to dial it back a little bit. Um, in the, at least in the near, in the near term, um, at least maybe interaction. So if I don't, if I'm a little bit slower to respond to you, um, it's just because I'm, I'm just not able to. Uh, but I will. Uh, don't worry. I, I, I will catch back up. Uh, you know, it's been a busy year. It's kind of insane when you think about it. Like when you really think about what has happened this year, and then when you think about what Pew Science has done in, in, in this year, it's it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it takes a village, though. It does. So thank you. Uh, to those of you who support the effort, you are really enabling uh, this this crazy stuff on a grand scale. And, you know, I would be remiss if I did not thank one of the biggest supporters of the podcast and of Pew Science. And that's Silencer Shop. That's right. And the J Situation podcast is proudly sponsored by Silencer Shop, the most efficient and intelligent way to purchase silencers. It is. <laughs> they're not they're not only my dealer of choice guys it's my infrastructure of choice and it's i wrote this ad and i i kind of massage it every time i give it because i i do mean it like it using the sponsor shop system just works and it's pretty safe um the the qr code they use to scan the atf uses to scan the form to put it in the system i mean it's i'm telling you the logistical burden it has reduced is so significant that it it's almost dumb not to use it. The fact that all your fingerprints and your photos are in the kiosk encrypted and you can just buy more stuff without having to deal with it. Like, I don't know about you, but my time is worth a lot. So anytime someone can save me that effort with a, with a method that cuts down on errors, I'm I'm all in. Okay, so for busy people... Yeah, like I'm busy. I mean, sure, you don't have to use Sansa Shop. Like, obviously, you can do it yourself. I mean, before there's before they were out there, I mean, I, I did all my Form 4 stuff myself, all my Form 1 stuff myself. You know, I make a copy, keep a copy, send the copy in a big middle envelope to the ATF and all, you know, whatever. It's not like, it's not rocket science. But in this day and age, there's, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff. Uh, you get busy. So, yeah, use the kiosk. Do your fingerprints, your photos, simplify it, simplify everything. Money back guarantee, no paperwork errors, just you and your silencer with no drama. It truly is silencer ownership simplified. That's right, it is. So, I mean, that's why. I mean, it's honest discussion here. It's not like I'm even, you know, they asked me, it's like, what what do you, what ad are you going to run on the podcast? I said, I'm just going to tell people what I think. And they're like, okay. And I showed them some copy and they're like, okay. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's like I'm not I'm not um I'm not going to like lie to you it'd be dumb. Okay. And uh this uh, secondly though <laughs> the um 
the, the, the most important sponsor and contributor to this podcast, even more so than Sponsor Shop, is Pew Science itself. That's right. Uh, Pew Science is pushing the sponsor industry forward one test at a time. PewScience.com has all of the information that you need. You go there, you're going to see something called the suppression rating. It is the simplest and the most accurate hearing safe rating for your suppressed small arms. It is. I mean, it's bar none. There's no second place. It is the best. Um, it is based on true human sound perception. Okay, it's in section five of the Silencer Sound Standard. It's going to walk you through gunshot noise, kind of like Wikipedia, but it's cooler. Okay, it's more entertaining. It's about Silencer Sound. Who doesn't like that? There's seven parts. They're all on the website for you to read, PewScience.com. If you have not seen the Silencer Sound Standard, it's fine. Like, you, you know, you don't have to say, oh, man, I have to do all this homework. It's like, no, I mean, save it for a rainy day. I mean, look at it eventually, but, you know, if you don't want to dive into the whole thing, skip a section five, look at a suppression rating, just like, you know, see what it does. It just basically lets you know how silencers stack up in comparison to one another with regard to sound at the muzzle and at the shooter's ear, and it gives you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which the silencers are tested, okay? That's that's the main thing here, and it's directly tied to human perception. If it's, if it's a higher number, it's going to sound better. If it's lower, eh, it's not going to sound as good to you. And the reason that is is because it's going to be affecting your ears in a negative way. Same, same. Anything that sounds good to your ears is usually going to be good for your ears. If it sounds bad to your ears, it's a problem. Okay, that's like a rule of thumb about how your ears work. So, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? If you're like, you know, Jay, um, I, I went to section six, and the, these reviews that you have are some kind of autistic uh, disaster. And I'm like, you know, that, you could be right, sir or ma'am. Um, however... If you don't want to look at those, just go to section seven. There's a ranking section. There's a tool. It's a little database tool you can sort to your heart's content. And when you find something you like, there are links that will take you back to the detailed review so you can learn all about that favorite silencer that you're thinking about buying or that you already own and shoot all the time. Yeah. And as always, if you're a manufacturer and you would like to, you know, Use Pew Science for private testing and consulting services. You can go to the website and fill out a form there. There's a request for quote form on the website. Uh, you can fill it out there. You, any contact information you provide to us is held in strict confidence. Um, all the test data we generate is held in strict confidence as well. Unless uh, you want to release it to the public. Maybe after we're done with your project, your testing effort, you say, you know, this is pretty good. Uh, you think we could show this to people? I say, yeah, no problem. I got you. And uh, we'll release that. We've done that several times. I think uh, I think we'll probably do it again. And you can see some of those some of those projects we've done uh, on the website right now. And you can support this podcast. You can support Pew Science. You can support our testing with, by joining with a membership at pewscience.com. That is uh, really good. That's a very good way to support it. It's really cheap. Yeah, I kept it really cheap. Because I, I figured, you know, hey, I want to make it easy and, and not a burden. And I know there's a lot of you who use the data, so I figured, you know, maybe maybe you join. And, and, and if you can't, if, if, if you know, the, the, the eight bucks or whatever it is a month is, is too much for you, I understand. Like that, I, I don't want to force you. So in lieu of that, or in addition to it, if you can support, uh, please spread the word. Yeah, subscribe to the podcast. You know, subscribe to the newsletter on the website, rate the podcast on your provider there, write some reviews, and uh, let folks know that, uh, the, you know, Sonsers guns are awesome. Maybe the general public will take heed. You know, we can normalize normalize the, uh, the effort here so that next time someone has a debate about guns, you, next thing you know, someone pipes up from the back and they're like, well, yeah, I mean, I use a silencer. You know, I want to be polite to all the neighbors and all the everyone's like, everyone's like, oh my gosh, me too. Next thing you know, they're we're bringing silencers back into show and tell it in school. You know, little Jimmy has a has a fifty cal silencer. That's it's big. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can barely fit it in my backpack. And they're like, yeah. Where's the rifle? Like, he's like, oh. You, it's outside. It couldn't fit in the door. <laughs> you remember the back in the day, the kids, they would bring their hunting rifles to school for show and tell. 
They would. I live for the day when, you know, crew served weapons are brought to school. I, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't be. I feel like it'd be a good idea. I mean, theory plus, like it teaches teamwork. I don't know. I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea to me. Okay, <laughs> I got, I'm going off the rails quick, and it's we just got started. I have three. I prepared three topics for you, knowing that like I'm probably going to go super long on one of them. Topic one: Sound Signature Review 654, the OSS HXQD556 on the Mark 18. Technical discussion. Okay, so this is I'm going to go down to the weeds a little bit. On this review for you guys, this is another OSS silencer, so we'll talk about that. Uh, topic two, something near and dear to my heart, fanny packs. <laughs> yes. If, if, if these are not already back in style, they should be, frankly. Okay, so they're so versatile. And dare I say, attractive. Okay, they are attractive. Uh, and finally, topic three, I, I do want to give it a specific huge Pew Science welcome to some new corporate supporters. Uh, Discrete Ballistics, uh, now out of Wyoming. They were uh, in New Hampshire. And Dark Horse Tactical out of Nevada. So honored to have the support of those folks. That's really great. Um, Also, another huge welcome to all the new consumer members of Pew Science. Okay, this is super grassroots, and it is awesome. We're doing it together. So I just, you know, I mentioned this on our podcast. I'm not going to stop thanking people, so... I'll let you know that. <laughs> okay, let's get into topic one at a time of 11 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, get some water here. I'm going to need water for this one. Okay. Topic one, sound signature review 654. The OSS HXQD 556 on the Mark 18. Okay, let's talk technically... You know, it's funny. Um, It is funny. I gave some super vague hints on the last episode about this, and several of you actually guessed that this was going to be the Silencer Next published. You did. I think some of you are really tuned in, which is neat. It is. And I, I really like that because it shows a lot of you are very enthusiastic about the effort. And I share your enthusiasm. I do. So I did think this was an important review. Some of you are asking for some other silencers on some different hosts, and we may take a detour shortly, but I did want to get to this. I did, okay? Um, this it, it, it wasn't complicated. Like The method to my madness was to show you relatively quickly how 556 five, bore silencers can vary and the incredible difference flow rate can make. Okay, that's this is like... I had like a micro detour to do and I'm almost done with it. Okay. So like, so what do we have so far? We have, we have the Surefire SOCOM 556 RC2 with two different mounts. Okay. So you saw that. You saw that in Sound Signature Review 652. And then we explored the Silencer Co. Saker 556. Okay. That was in Sound Signature Review 653. And now you have the OSS HXQD 556 Review 654. All right, so that's kind of the, the 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 progression in the near term that we that we just to, just to recap, okay. And so, um, up front, and I said this on the last podcast episode too. I wanted to really make sure folks understand the origins of this data, this review, and and I want to make sure you understand how Pew Science works, okay? OSS did not know I tested this silencer. All right. I think that they knew I was eventually going to test it, but up until this point, they had no idea. Okay. And I visited OSS earlier this year because I was invited. I was invited to OSS up to Utah. Um, They saw the stuff that I was doing and they saw the data I had released on their 762 silencers on bolt guns. Um, I think at that time, all I had published was the supersonic 762 data. I had not uh, yet published the 300 blackout subsonic data. I think, if I remember correctly, that 300 blackout subsonic data on the minifix, I had not published that yet. Uh, So at the time, I was deep into the development of the Omega metric, and I wanted to really explore test data that was outside Pew Science. All right, so and that type of test data is very rare. 
it's very rare that you can get a hold of real test data that is acquired and analyzed properly. I actually, I still haven't seen any. I've seen some stuff from Crane, which is okay. Other than that, I haven't seen any test data that I would even want to use for analysis. I mean, I, I don't want to, I really don't want to get into politics. Um, but uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to mention it. I, I'll just say I've been looking and I haven't seen anything. And so, you know, the sound data, this, it's funny when you look for other test data, it, it's almost it's almost impossible to find other sound data that's available but there are a lot of other types of test data that exist so going back to OSS you know um, this I can't speak about the particular data that OSS and I exchanged that's like some NDA stuff but after meeting with them and their testing team it was clear that the Omega metric was solidified or at least solidifying, and it was it was showing significant promise. Okay, that was a big takeaway from my visit and continued validation from outside sources was a welcome thing to me, and it is always a welcome thing to me. So OSS and I had great meetings and kind of kept in touch a little bit, you know, but that's it. I mean, I, that was the extent of that. And just so you guys know, I mean, just, I want to be transparent with you. So then a couple, what is it, like last month, excuse me, like OSS recently joined as a, joined Pew Science as a corporate member, you know, any, and actually it's funny, um, I guess someone asked me the other day, you know, I, I told them any manufacturer can, can do that, um, anyone can join as a corporate member, if you're a consumer, and you want to be an advanced member of Pew Science, like the corporations are, like you can also do that. Like knock yourself out. If you can afford it, do it. You can become an advanced member as a consumer. You just gotta pay. But if you can, dude, by all means, that is awesome. Like totally, I I, I will not stop you from giving me money. <laughs> I really won't. Um, no, but it would help. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised that OSS joined. I was. I believe, I think they joined in September, and I had conducted this testing at the end of August. Okay, so I had this data before they even joined Pew Science. Okay, so I say all of this, like I'm giving you, I'm like, this is like a drawn out thing. I, I'm, I'm, there's a method here. This is, there's a reason. I say all this because the silencer industry is extremely politically difficult. Okay. And I don't think any, I don't think that's a surprise to any of you who listen to this podcast or who keep up with the performance of science or products. All right. The the industry is extremely politically diff difficult. And um and it, there's a good reason for that. It, and the reason it, it the reason it's so politically difficult is because it's rooted in approx approximately three decades of lies and uh, and half truths and deception and such and frankly, general tomfoolery. If I'm to be honest with you, <laughs> all right, like just just tomfoolery all around. And so in an effort to fix this and delete these negative things, I have gone out of my way to really remind people of how I am operating this effort and doing so with full transparency. OK, that's I'm that's what I'm doing. And undoubtedly, undoubtedly, some people are going to criticize the technical conclusions reached in this OSS review. Some people are going to criticize, and that's fine. Oh, that's fine. But I'm here to tell you, the data and analysis presented in this review of the HXQD556 is not only correct, but it's validated by scores of users. Okay, the conclusions are consistent with weapon operation. They're consistent with the Omega metric, the manufacturer design and evaluation experience. They're consistent with users shooting it across the country. Okay, and that, that's the beauty of Pew Science. Okay, it's complete and consistent data. Okay, so I'm going to open this review. Like I just, I had to say this because, 
And I, I screenshotted tons of people saying that they're, they, they are confirming this, the relativistic nature of this versus the sacred and the shirt. Like they, people own the silencer and they're using it. And they're like, I told you. And what happened, what happened on the previous OSS reviews? Everyone was like, I, everyone that owned an OSS silencer, like, I told you, dude, no one would believe them. It's because there's this weird something that's not correct dat like marketing force that's counteracting everything. So I'm gonna open the review on PewScience.com so we can talk about it technically now. Um you know, it's like it's so cra- isn't it so crazy that I have to even preface this technical discussion with a political statement just to isn't that just this the, but that's that's the silencer industry. You know what I mean? And that's why every single entity that tried to measure sound independently has failed in the past because they couldn't remain independent they couldn't do it and they couldn't stay out of the they couldn't stay out of the drama they couldn't let the data speak for themselves because their data wasn't good enough and they had no analysis okay so now you see why i'm doing it this way the only way to survive and the only way to protect you as consumers and protect the industry and actually stop all that bs is to do the way i'm doing you see, there's no other way. It's funny how that works. A lot of you are like, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? It's like, no. I'm going to do it my way because it's going to work. Okay, so I went to um, to the reviews here. I'm going to click on the uh, log into the member area. Click on the member review, 654. Okay, all right. Let's get here. So bottom line up front, 31.0 composite suppression rating on the Mark 18. For this OSS silencer. That's 27.5 muzzle suppression rating and a 27.5 ear suppression rating. That's right. That's right. Uh the suppression rating at the muzzle and the ear are the same on the silencer. They're the same. One meter left of the muzzle, or left of the end cap, let's be clear. Okay. One meter left of the silencer end cap. And six inches right of the shooter's right ear. The sound signature is very similar, or rather the hearing risk is very similar. Um, This is actually the first time in the entire published Pew Science data set that this has occurred. So like, why did this occur? Why is it like that? Like, why is that? And why, why would that happen? What would cause that? And does it matter to you? You know, there are some things in the Science or Sound Standard that I've told you in the past and the very technical folks who have reviewed the standard understand um there's there is actually there's a there's some stuff that's built in to protect you because I knew how far this would go and so some of that I talk about with regard to wave shape of the ear and some of some some of the inherent conservatism at the shooter's ear uh, because of just the fact that this is, I'm dealing with human beings and there's like no one regular regulating this. So like I had to, I take some responsibility, you know what I mean? Like, I like legally, like I'm not responsible for anything you do and for all intents and purposes, like this data should be ignored by you and you, you, you could shoot yourself in the face and it wouldn't be my fault because I don't sell the gun and you know, this data is is what it is but the reality is that i do not want you to hurt yourself and so i built in some some conservatism in a way not conservatism by massaging numbers but conservatism in that we have a shooter present when we shoot so we have a transfer function of the human head that exists and does induce reflection to the sensor and will result in a suppression rating that is slightly conservative uh, but with with that conservatism there's also some things that are unconservative okay in the modeling we do and the process so you know whether or not it balances out Hey, it's the best we have for now until we decide to change it. 
So when you see a muzzle rating and an ear rating that's the same, know that that doesn't mean that the waveforms are identical. Because what, what, what have you learned so far? Well, you learned that the suppression rating measures inner ear response. It just so happens that the measured waveforms affect ear response in an extremely similar way for this silencer, one meter left of the end cap and six inches right of the shooter's right ear. Okay, you understand what I mean? So I asked you earlier, I said, well, does it matter that those are the same? Does it matter? Well, I can tell you right now, it only matters in that the results matter holistically. Okay, so the fact that the ratings just happen to be the same at the muzzle and the ear on this particular weapon, it's it's kind of a coincidence. Like there's no there's no magic to that. That's just it is the way the numbers worked out. But it's not without importance. I mean, it does demonstrate some incredible features of the HXQD556. Okay, so it is important. It's just the the fact that they're the same is not. But it is it is it, de it, it demonstrates phenomena. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Now, so let's walk through the review. Okay, we'll walk through it. Now, I'm got it open. I have it open here on my on my computer. All right. <clears throat> so okay, so I'm gonna scroll down. Got a summary. Got the graphic. See the ratings. So basically, you have the bot. You could stop reading right now and already have the answer. Okay, but you know, folks are skeptical, especially given the past thirty years. So I had to give you more information, so you believe me. So, okay. well, that's important. I mean, I wouldn't believe me either unless I gave the info I gave you. So okay, you scroll down, you get to the get to table one. Okay, peak peak DB, peak impulse, yada yada. Skip that part. Doesn't matter. That part that part is for people still hung up on single peak measurements who somehow think it's going to drive all the results, and and they they go they go into fits on the internet if I don't report it. Okay, that's what that is. That, that's what that that table one is basically a high level summary to say here's the overall suppression rating and here's the the, the peak pressure and the real peak pressure and impulse if, if, if you're curious and that's the part that all of these guys are like they they're they're literally they're they're punching the air and they're what's that frog meme where the the the, the green frog and it the the whole thing's a shade of red and he's yelling and he's like losing his mind. Like that's what that this table. That's what causes that with people. They just they lose their mind because they can't possibly understand why uh, why raw data measured at one mega sample per second at a megahertz is is uh, uh, unfiltered, undecimated is is showing something higher than theirs <laughs> when they're measuring like a quarter of the speed and they're filtering their data. <laughs> it's like. Uh, are you serious right now? Like, do you even understand data acquisition? Like, what? Come on, man. You can't use it. You can't. You all using a BK pulse, and like, but they don't even know what the BK pulse does. It's like, bro, you just you bought a Ferrari, and you. Okay, bad example. You, I was, I was, I was gonna say you bought a Ferrari, and you can't drive a stick shift, but the Ferraris are automatic now. So anyway, you get my point, dude. And their Ferrari is not even that good. It's more of, it's more like a V6 Mustang. Um, yeah, V6 Mustang for sure. That's what I would say they're using. Anyway, ignore table one, move on. I want you to look at figure one. I want, I want you to look at the f the first picture, figure one A. Before, like that's the first thing I want. Like after you look at the review graphic in this review, just skip table one, go to figure one, and. I'm, I'm going to click on it to make it bigger. It, it should look orange to you because shot six is the last shot in the series and it's overlaid. And I don't know if it's just because I look at, at these figures all the time and just because I look at blast waveforms all the time because it's kind of my career. But this figure jumps out at me and it smacks me in the face. Okay, this is the type of thing that should... It, this should this actually... Hold on, excuse me. <clears throat> this this is the type of thing that should make you angry this figure 
you should be angry that I'm the first person showing you this, I think. I think. I do. I, I think you should be angry because the Sancho manufacturers and the dealers and distributors have never once show you, shown you complete waveforms ever, let alone waveforms drawn out this long. So in, in this figure, you see a Mark 18 sound signature 85 milliseconds long. All right, so that's almost a whole tenth of a second. Almost, and I measured way more. I just only showed you what the, the complete thing. I mean, it, it actually goes on, but the, the, the waveform is finished. Um, this is almost a tenth of a second, this entire thing. <laughs> you ne they've never even shown you this before because they can't. and Because they're they have, what are they, testing in a barn or something, testing, testing inside a building. Um so the the main decay the main decay the blowdown only takes like 20 milliseconds or so it only takes 20 milliseconds or so it's wild right this is the this oss sign this is this is a, this is a six these are six shots measured one meter left of the muzzle that's what this is showing the impression this is pressure space the entire blowdown, dude, the entire blowdown only takes like 20 milliseconds. Look, it starts at like 30. By 50, it's gone, dude. It's gone. It's, the, it, it, it's almost ambient. Roughly. Okay, don't quote me on the exact, but you, you can look at it yourself. Okay? It happens so incredibly quickly. The decay happens so incredibly quickly. The gas is dumped out of the silencer so quickly that the ground reflection... The ground reflection from the primary muzzle blast and it travels back to the microphone shows up super pronounced because it's usually m nested with the blowdown. But OSS silencer uh, blows down so quickly that the that the ground reflection uh, sticks out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? This is another. Oh, oh, by the way, this is another way you can tell that the data's right because you know the speed of sound, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's another, you know, if, 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 if you're a, if you just want to put pencil to paper, you can do these calcs yourself. You can take my waveforms and you can do the calcs yourself to prove that it's right. So anyway, I mean, because there's, there's people saying, oh, he's not putting the right. No, it's, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> um, so here you can see it's still nested. The ground reflection is still nested with a blowdown. Um, but the main blowdown is so, so low already by the time that that wave gets to the microphone that you see that huge spike. You see that huge spike? It's, it's huge. That, that right there, the shape of this curve, that spike, it's around 37 milliseconds or so on the chart, on, on the graph there. Um, the shape of this curve and that spike are the reasons you should probably want to flip your desk over right now and throw your computer against the wall. Like, why has why has no one ever shown you this before? What like in the history, in the history of small arms, no one has ever shown you this. So, like, why hasn't anyone shown you that? Like, if they were really, if someone's really concerned, if someone was really concerned about science or sound signatures and understood them, why haven't they showed you this? It's a great question. It is. Let's move on. Uh, if, if, but here's another thing in the figure. Um, go to around 95 milliseconds in that same picture. I'm still looking at figure 1A. We're still on figure 1. 1A. First picture. Look at 95 milliseconds. You see those little guys around that time, little, little perturbations? Little pressure signals there on in every shot. They're a little very a little bit, right? You know why? That's the bolt closing, bro. Bro. That's the bolt closing after case ejection. Long after everything's done. Long after that's late time, bro. That's that's one meter left of the muzzle. You're 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 picking that up. Okay? One meter left of the muzzle. You're picking up the bolt closing, the action, okay? Turns out uh, you, you you can pick that up if you test correctly, turns out. So um, imagine that. 
Um, I, I'm not sure why folks haven't been showing you this stuff for the past 30 years. It doesn't, it doesn't take new technology to show you this. It, we've had, trust me, because I do this in my day job. Like, we've had the technology. It's not, folks just didn't care at all. And so that's what you've been dealing with for the past 30 years. Okay, you, you're, this YouTube, st I'm sorry, this YouTube stuff, it's doing the same thing the guys before them did and the guys before them did. Look at these waveforms. Unequivocally, this shows that the OSS is dumping gas quickly and the bolt takes forever to come back because it was moving so slow in the first place. These are two telltale signs of significantly low back pressure. And I haven't even moved past the first plot yet, guys. This isn't, this is figure 1A in this review. Okay, let's go to the next, Ser I'm, I'm losing my mind because I'm like, are you serious? Like I, someone had the nerve to say something like the other day and I was like, you don't, I'm like, you really? So, okay, <laughs> let's go to the next figure. Okay, okay, figure 1B. So close figure 1A, go to figure 1B. This is an easy one. It's it, There's only two waveforms on it, shot one and shot two. There's You should, should see a black curve, a, a, a black waveform, and a, and a blue waveform. Okay, figure 1B. You recognize this one? You should. Frankly, you should recognize it because the HXQD762 did the same dang thing on a three-weight bolt gun. It did, dude. The the their the OSS 762 silencer did the same thing that this 556 OSS silencer is doing on the Mark 18. It did the same thing. The peaks are different, fine. The peaks are different. And if you're Joe Blow Internet Forum or manufacturer guy that, that that's gonna get hung up on these all these peaks, they're gonna it's you're gonna have a bad time. Look at the shape of the curve. Okay, the of course the peaks are different. The two different silencers. <laughs> okay, the, of course the peaks are different from the 308 review, but the behavior is almost exactly the same. Extra combustion venting with a bullet exit on the first shot. Classic high flow behavior. Textbook pew science. Textbook pew science. Then look at shot two. Shot two, that, that part reduces. You still get a long duration positive phase. Okay, and I'm using that fancy term, positive phase. What does that mean? It means the waveform stays positive for a while before it goes into significant rarefaction. What does that mean? It stays positive a long time before it goes negative for a long time. Okay, these are just words. Okay, just I'm just saying the real words because you guys need to understand them. When you build your vocabulary, you'll be able to speak more intelligently about the phenomena. Okay, so in blast loads, we call that a significant positive phase duration followed uh, prior to rarefaction. Okay, okay. Now, why is that? Why would you get significantly long duration early time positive phase pr pressure like that? Why would that be? We talked about this probably talked about this two times before. I can't remember what episodes it was, but I know I've talked about this with you before when I reviewed the HXQD762 on the on the supersonic 308 and the, the subsonic 300 blackout. I know I've talked about this, but let's talk about it again. Um, why would you get significantly long dura duration early time positive phase? You would get that because of forceful positive phase impulse right after the bullet exit. You get a fast gas dump. That's why. Fast gas dump is the only reason why you would get you would get a significant positive phase duration like this shot to shot. Remember, we're still looking at figure one one B. We're in pressure space still. I'm telling you, the only reason you would see this is fast gas dump. And that, my friends, is why you need to be careful in social media comments. All right, I'm telling you, this is physics. It's undeniable and you'll notice you're you're seeing absolutely zero engineers refuting this data zero there has not been one I, because they know what it takes to do this and they see it and um you, the, the the folks that are all been out of shape those are salespeople and technicians guys okay they're not engineers <laughs> trust me <laughs> and yeah and i hope i oh my god i hope they're listening to this Show me an engineer who disagrees with this data. I want to see one. 
I'll show me. It would be amazing to, to just to hear the just to hear the justification. It would be like I don't care what company is from. Just pick one, pick pick one, dude. Pick one. I love it. I want it to happen. <laughs> I welcome the day, <laughs> but it's never gonna happen because they there. It's this is. Guys, these are the first two pictures, and it's showing the same waveforms. I just zoomed in on figure 1B. This is You almost don't even need to look at the rest of the review. But we're going to for completeness to show you it all adds up. But like this is what we're seeing, and it's not that hard anymore. It's almost, I almost feel like we're almost done with this. It's like, it's so, it's like... I don't mean to be negative. I'm just, I'm tired. <laughs> But this is this is what you do when you study combustion. Okay, it's not new. It's old and established. It's the first time sponsor industry has seen it. It's fine. Okay, now let's recap. Let, let's recap really quick and see what you've 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 seen so far. You have three huge indicators of the OSS silencer behavior in the first two plots. Okay, two pictures. I you know so. So what are the three huge indicators right now? You have fast gas dump due to ground reflection showing up easily. You know that's happening. Can you see that? You see the blowdown was fast. Okay, so that was the first thing. Then you got bolt closing happening super duper late time. And I'll, I'm going to qualify that statement. So, you know, that's not always an indicator due to the gun being dirty. But this time it's okay because I can tell you when I was when I was testing this, actually the the it was early in the test series. So the the, the returning bolt speed wasn't wasn't that effective it's fine and then you have a huge initial positive phase in the next figure okay so 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 far so good so far so good textbook behavior of an extremely low back pressure silencer now if that wasn't enough to convince you if you're still not convinced that the oss has very low back pressure um Let's look at more pictures. Let's look at figure two. <laughs> figure two A and figure two B. All right. These look this these look similar too, right? You super fast rise. Super fast rise. Look at the initial impulse slope, fam. Yeah. A, a few of you have asked me via email. And only a few, which is interesting. Really only a couple. I thought there would be more. A few of you have asked me, what's impulse? It is the area under the pressure curve in a continuum. All right. It is the potential of momentum transfer to occur. And the rate at which it skyrockets in the initial blowdown of a silencer apparently is indirectly proportional to the silencer's flow restriction and directly proportional to the flow rate. And that, my friends, is the omega metric okay that's what that is that's what i did that's what that's the metric i developed it's not it's actually it's i want to say it's not that complicated but it's not it just the silencer dumps this silencer dumps gas very very quickly this the omega metric is very very low same same as it was on 308 was low there I, and i didn't give you the actual metric in this review because i'm working on some presentation stuff but i'm telling you I've run the numbers, and and this thing works on 5562. The Omega metric works on that, too. The metric's different a little bit with regard to magnitude. Um, and, and actually, I did write about that when I initially released the metric. That's why I had, like, Omega sub 762 and Omega sub 556 because I knew it would be different because of cartridge load. Um, but it's tracking with weapon behavior. Okay, which is super important. Like that's really important. It, it tracks with weapon behavior, and that's very, very, very good validation for the Omega metric. It, it, is it perfect and complete validation? No, absolutely not. Not yet. It definitely is not. But we're well on our way to solidifying the science here. We are, which is really awesome. Okay, I actually feel like it's it's so groundbreaking that this type of measurement. And getting the information out of it, there are there are some little factors we're not catching. Okay, there are. I already know of something that can happen. Um, I think 
that would mask would not show up in the Omega metric, I think. Uh, but if this works like 90% of the time or so, it's going to be pretty huge, dude. Like, I'm pretty pleased with that. So, I mean, it's better than a lot of other stuff out there, which is nothing. <laughs> it's better than nothing. So, okay, moving on. Um, so, yeah, so right now you understand the flow state. Like, that. these 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 first four figures pretty much convin- should, should have convinced you. Should have convinced you that this is... You should be able to see an OSS waveform and be like, well, that's an OSS. It's a fingerprint. Remember that? Remember when I talked about the silencers having fingerprints? Oh, boy. The, the the OSS has one of those crazy double loops on their thumbs. You know, that super rare fingerprint feature? That That's what that's what the OSS has. You, you're never going to mistake it for anything else. I promise you that. These these waveforms are so unique. Uh, if you put them in a lineup and you didn't put a, any, any numbers on the axes of the plots, I'd still be able to pick it out. Well... If I measured them, not if some of these other guys measured them, it looked like elephant painting a Bob Ross painting. Um, so yeah, first round pop. Um, it has some. It does. You know, it's funny. You think about you think about um, high flow rate silencers and first round pop, right? You know, it's kind of. You know, with, with, with the high flow rate, it's kind of hard for the OSS not to have some first round pop. But one thing that makes that first round pop show up in the OSS is the way it suppresses. See, because typically, and this is this is a weird nuance that I'm not sure if some of you caught this. I think some of you caught it, but typically, when a silencer has a really high flow rate, it is super duper loud, and first round pop is inconsequential because every single shot is loud. That's just something that is we discovered and we showed on the the you know some of these previous reviews now like okay for example here, here's here's a concrete example for you um short configuration of a rugged radiant or a sam and k those are like on 308 at least those are death loud dude like those are super duper loud now all that oxygen in there before the first shot that it's different with the oss because the OSS, it does suppress. It suppresses differently. It does suppress. All that oxygen before the first shot in the OSS, it's going to support extra combustion, and it's going to drop the suppression efficiency, which you see. You see in the waveforms, right? You can see, especially, you see it in the rise time uh, and the, the coupled ex- bullet exit event in the pressure history in figure 1B, and then you see figure 2A and figure 2B. You see the black curve. Shot 1 is, is way more pronounced. That's that extra oxygen, dude. That's what that is. That's extra oxygen supporting additional combustion in the silencer. Okay? Dropping the suppression efficiency. That's what that's doing. Um, it's noticeable when you shoot it. Is, it. is it super terrible? No, it's not super terrible, no. But it's noticeable. It's noticeable on the platform. And the, the, inner ear, the inner ear models say it's going to be noticeable to you, the shooter. Okay? So, so yeah. Now, there's some ear waveform stuff in this review that's really wild. There it is. I'm gonna scroll down. Oh man, these it's it's actually it's 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 scary crazy. Um all you Pew Science members that have access to the member data, I do encourage you to take a look at the waveforms. Okay, take a look. If you weren't convinced of the fast blowdown looking at the muzzle stuff, fine. Look at the ear stuff. Okay? Look at the shooter's ear waveforms. That's all I'm going to say about that. That's a member thing. Uh, I'm not going to publicly talk about that. Just, I'm just not going to. So, But that does bring me to a huge point that I do want to talk about. You know, the elephant in the room is ejection port signature. Not shooter's ear signature, but ejection port signature. Understand what I'm saying? Just because they're involved with each other doesn't mean they're the same thing because they're not. All right? The elephant in the room is ejection port signature. How does this ultra low back pressure system or silencer influence the sound signature on the Mark 18? How does it? I mean, yeah, okay, so the barrel, the barrel of this gun's only 10.3 inches long. So the end cap's relatively close to the shooter with a with a relatively short silencer. Okay, this isn't like a 
a super duper long nine inch silencer, right? How, how long is it? I don't have it in front of me. I'm going to scroll up. What did I write? I wrote 6.75 inches in length from tip of the flash hider features on the end cap to the rear. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, when I measured it, it was like that. So, okay. Take off like an eighth of an inch. It's like 6.7 inches or it's at least six and a half inches on top of the 10.3 inch barrel. Okay. So it's pretty short compared to like, I don't know, a nine inch silencer. So, you know, every time you shove your um, pressure origin at the end cap closer to your ear, it's going to make it louder to the shooter. So there's that. So we know the silencer is going to be kind of loud because it's only a 10.3 inch barrel. We know that. But also we put an H2 buffer in the gun. And is that going to help? Is that going to help close the action long enough such that the pressure can blow down in the barrel prior to unlocking and we don't get a huge pressure pulse at the ear? Will the OSS silencer result in the H2 buffer being enough on this gun? Is the back pressure so low that the, 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 the gun is like, oh, H2 is great for this? Is the carbine spring in there okay enough? It's like, oh, yeah, the carbine spring is strong enough to keep it closed long enough because we don't, we don't have a lot of back pressure, so it should be fine. Is that fine? Is that true? I mean, is does the OSS help with ejection port pop due to its low flow restriction you know, due to its so-called low back pressure. Is the OSS silencer helping you with this configuration? Is the back pressure low enough to help you a lot? The answer is, is a resounding 100% unequivocal yes. 100%. Look at figure five. Look at figure five. Look at it. Okay. I'm going to click on it make it bigger. It's huge. I have a big monitor, so it's like <laughs> blown up. Um, the OSS is a little bit louder. One meter left of the end cap than the RC2 with a war comp. Okay. So that RC2 with a war comp, it's leaking gas like a sieve, bro. Leaking gas like a sieve. That war comp is leaking so badly because of that substandard seal with the locking collar onto the, the rear of the mount. And the OSS is also leaking gas, but not from the mount. It's leaking gas from the front on purpose. It's a gas dump. It dumps gas. Okay. So the OSS, I, you know, sometimes I say the sensors are gas traps, trap gas. Okay, OSS sensors is a gas dump. It dumps gas. Completely different. OSS is not a gas trap. Completely different. Um, has a bunch of holes. It does. It's doing this on purpose. So um, it's actually so. Boom. When you really think about this, uh, and this this is gonna blow your mind. Uh, when you think about it like this, the OSS silencer is kind of doing the same thing as the Warcom's doing, but with a higher flow rate and on purpose in the right spot. You feel me? So like, so think think back to the Surefire review with the Warcom. What's happening? You're dumping gas from the mount interface before it even goes to the silencer. That's a problem. It's superheated gas. That's a problem. Um, and it's not doing any work at all. It's just like that that gas is really hot and it's coming right out. Hasn't even gone through the silencer yet, dude. That's not where you want to shoot gas out of a suppressed system, guys. War comp's not good with a silencer. It just doesn't work correctly. Um So, look at the ear signature of the two of the two. Because I mean, you know that 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 gas dump it it affected the the war comp at the one meter left of the muzzle, and we know that the OSS signature it's being affected by the OSS gas dump at the OSS muzzle has a high flow rate, but that's definitely affecting the the muzzle signature. Okay, down at twenty seven point five. Okay. But the suppression rating is the same on the OSS as it is on the muzzle. All right. It's wild. It's wild. I mean, look now look at the difference in this the, the muzzle suppression rating 
and the ear suppression rating for the for for the for the RC2 and the war comp. We're still we're still looking at the war comp. The war comp equipped RC2 is sitting at 13.3 at the ear and the OSS is at 27.5. Okay? Now keep in mind the war comp's a little quieter at the muzzle but at the ear at the ear 13.3 okay so the oss has double the suppression rating at the ear than a than a war comp equipped surefire double dude <laughs> that's uh not the same sport it's ludicrous and so that's so different you got to ask yourself has anyone has anyone shot these silencers on this gun and actually compared them? Like, I don't even, like, or have they just listened to internet marketing lies and forum gossip, dude? Like, I don't even understand. It's such a big difference in sound. You can hear it, and you can feel it on your face. You can feel it on your face, dude. It's not even... People say the other day, oh, the World Cup's not that bad. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. okay. Like, are you, are you drunk? Like, I don't understand... Um, why would that be? Why would you have such similar muzzle ratings? Like, you know, the, the war comp muzzle rating with a surefire and the OSS muzzle rating, 27.5 versus 29.2, they're close, not that far off. Why would you have such similar muzzle ratings and drastically different ear ratings, drastically different with a disparity like that on the Mark 18 on this gun? It's because of the war comp leak and ejection port signature, guys. Okay, and then this is this is where the Pew Science members have a huge leg up. This is where folks probably got a little comfortable during the bolt gun reviews, thinking, "Oh, well, Jay gives Jay gives us the at ear suppression rating for free. Whatever. I'm not going to join. I don't want to support him. He's dumb." Okay, that's mean, but I understand. But now, now members are seeing wild stuff. Um, so if for some reason you're doubting this data or doubting the conclusions seen here, go ahead and support for a month, dude. Just give it a month. Costs you the same, same as a trip to Starbucks. You're going to be convinced that this data is not only correct, but you should flip the table over because no one ever showed this to you. Like you're, it's irresponsible not to see, not to look at this, not to look at the waveforms. My goodness. You know, OSS did their best to show people this. They did. They did their best to show people the lack of flow restriction. To show that the bolt wasn't opening too early. They did their best. Um, I mean, they didn't do their absolute best. They they made a val they made an effort. Um, I don't know. If I was them, I'm not sure how I would market it. I would probably show them actually, frankly, I'd show them this data is what I would do, but they didn't have my data, did they? Um they had other stuff. And what they did, if you've ever been to an OSS demo, they take an AR. I saw this maybe three years ago. Four years ago now? Three years ago. I think it was an OSS demo like three years ago. They take an AR. They shoot it gangster style, like sideways. Um, so the ejection port's basically in your mouth. And um, then they put their silencer on it like nothing changes. And then you try it with like a higher Omega number silencer. I don't know. An Omega? Or like... I don't know, anything else. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pick one. I don't know, pick a silencer. Put it on there. Immediately, there's a difference. Like, it's 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 a quick, practical demonstration of back pressure. Flow restriction. Early unlocking of the bolt. That's a really practical demonstration of that. Now, and, you know, not only early unlocking of the bolt, but even if the bolt doesn't, even if the bolt stays closed for a while, you still are not going to clear your your barrel of gas. I mean, it's still you're still you're so the flow rate is so low compared to an unsuppressed state on most silencers that you're just you're just not you just don't experience the blowdown you need compared to unsuppressed to to clear to clear everything to clear the breach. All right. <clears throat> 
So that's one thing OSS did. You know, I remember there was another thing they did. I want to say they like had like a someone with a white shirt, and then they would I don't know, shoot the AR like left handed or something. So like you would blow the stuff on the shirt, or I don't remember what it, it's been. It's been a couple of years since I have attended one of those demos, but they do practical demonstrations with weapons, so you can see. Like it's one of the things they do. Um, it works. I mean, and and you know it's funny. You talk to the distributors, not like the distributors who do like a couple of silencers that are like partnered with certain silencer manufacturers, but like the big distributors, like the ones that sell all the silencers. Um, you know, like you talk to those guys. Like I've talked to so many of them. They're like, I don't understand why no one, why people don't buy these OSS silencers. Like they're. Like, they work. I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe you guys should, like, show people they work or something. They're like, yeah, maybe. And then, then they don't care. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's like, you're the one selling stuff. Like, go, go tell people about it. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Like, you think people would just, I don't know. Anyway, so OSS did their best. I mean, and the, the fact of the matter is the data that I produced here totally supports exactly what happens in the weapons with their silencers and totally supports what they've been saying about them. So I'm like, huh. That's weird. They took like an independent reviewer. It took Pew Science like to do this. Like, you, like no one else was. I can't. Isn't that crazy? Like, I feel like more people should know about this. Like, like what? Like, it, like I had to do this. I don't know, man. It kind of blew my mind. So, I don't know. Let's look at more of the data, though. Hey, let's let's keep talking about Figure Five. Yeah. How, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're over an hour in. That's fine. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not too late. Let's keep going. Yeah, let's keep talking about figure five. So, Surefire RC2 with a proper mount. Three prong. Okay. We know that works way better. Much quieter at the muzzle, actually. So, folks will definitely perceive that the art, the Surefire uh, SOCOM 556 RC2 with the three prong, they're definitely going to perceive that that's a quieter system than the OSS. Like, no question, dude. No question bystanders are going to think that. The data showing showing it, that's over a half a suppression rating category. That, that's really, that's a lot. That's a big difference. That's a big difference in sound. Sound signature, okay? So, and that, and I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Who's shot, if someone, if you were sitting at a range and someone was shooting the OSS and someone was shooting the, the Surefire with a three prong and the Mark 18, I have no doubt that people could say, you know what? This surefire sounds better to me, at the ear, uh, uh, to my ears as a bystander. I and I and and everyone would be like, "Yep, it sure does." And that's what the suppression rating shows. The suppression rating at the muzzle shows that. Okay. Okay. Now, look at the ear. Look at the ear suppression rating, though. OSS is still beating the RC2 with the ear, even when the RC2 uses the three prong. Now, it's not a hu as huge a difference as it was when you used the war comp, which was leaking gas like a sieve. But still there. Still beating it. Okay, now, that's one thing about it. Now, look at that Saker. Look at that, sa that Sancer Coast Saker. High back pressure on that Sancer, dude. High back pressure on the Sancer Coast Saker. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how, how much flow restriction it has. You know, the RC2 has lower back pressure. It's interesting. Look at the Saker. You know, the Saker, the Saker can't quite hang with the Surefire at the muzzle or the ear. And it most definitely can't hang with the OSS at the ear. Like, it, like this graph, this plot actually in figure five should tell you that the Saker has no business on the Mark 18. Like, that's like not a good solution. Um, so, yeah. This, this brings up kind of the second elephant in the room, doesn't it, though? What's the threshold? Like, what's the dang threshold? And can you tune this out of the Mark 18? Like, if the OSS silencer is louder at the muzzle and it's still beating the three prong equipped RC2 at the ear, that means that the ejection port signature is driving this hard, dude. It's it's a huge driver, a huge driver, because the 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 wraparound from the muzzle blast of the OSS isn't lowering the, the at-ear signature enough to make it 
worse than the surefire that's quieter. That means the ejection port signature is wild important on this gun for these silencers, right? I mean, that's that's like the only conclusion. I mean, think, I mean, it, okay, if I if that was complicated for you, take a minute, pause it, and think about it. Okay, it's fine. It's fine to think about that, and it, it can be complicated, but. But the ejection port signature is driving this on this gun. Okay, so so the question is, can you add a strong spring or a heavier buffer to the Mark 18 with the three prong and the RC2? And then can you hit 27.5 at the ear with a surefire like you, you are with the OSS? Can you do that? Can you get can you keep that that great muzzle suppression rating of the surefire? incredible muzzle suppression rating of the surefire can you keep that but g ramp up your your ear rating high and can you reach the oss ear rating on this gun or surpass it for that matter because we're gonna have to find out aren't we um but let me ask you a question you're talking about the mark 18 would you what if you could do that what if you could tune the gun with the RC2 and the three prong, and you could get that ear, that ear rating way up. Would you? Would you want to do that? And this has actually been something I'm, I'm th I've been thinking about. If you shoot a lot, and if you have to clean your AR, like especially if it's a machine gun, dude, and and if it's not really designed to run suppressed, like. And if you could just put an OSS 5.56 silencer on it and not really worry that much about cleaning it compared to unsuppressed shooting, could you just do that instead? Like, could you just use the OSS and know that you're wearing hearing protection on the Mark 18 anyway? It's an interesting thought, right? When you think about it like that. Like, it, it, like is the OSS the quietest? I mean, No. No, the data, the data shows it is, in fact, not as quiet to bystanders as the Saker or the Surefire with the 3-prong or the Warcop even. But to the shooter, I mean, I don't know, man. It's giving, you the least, it's giving you the least hearing damage on an untuned gun, guys. This untuned Mark 18 with an H2 and the 070 gas port, carbon length gas system, it's built, it's, it built to run reliably. You put an OSS on it, it's giving you the, the best sound signature at the shooter's ear. Unequivocally, the data shows it. So, so what is that going to do for the parts in the untuned gun? And the dirtiness, like the the the, the fouling in the in the untuned gun. Even if it was tuned, what's it going to do for the for the fouling? You know, I mean, I'm asking these questions somewhat rhetorically. I mean, it's food for thought, guys. When you like, it's food for thought. I mean, here's the thing: I need to return all of the OSS silencers I borrowed. I borrowed them from a dealer on Form 3. I submitted the Form 3 back to him. I'm waiting for it to get approved. Then I'm going to ship them all back to him. Um, shout out, sir. You know who you are. Thank you. You made this testing possible. Um, he's actually a Pew Science member dealer. Thank you, sir. I really do appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I tested. I actually tested more than just this OSS. I tested a bunch more. So there's more OSS data coming for you eventually. Um I, I was thinking I actually might buy a, a 5.56 OSS for the Pew Science Library. It's an interesting silencer, and frankly, it's one of the most surprising performers so far. Um, you know, are there other surprises too? Of course there are. Yeah, it's actually going to get super interesting. I think that this uh, it might even get controversial. This Mark 18 testing, you're gonna, you might see some stuff. I've saw I've seen some stuff that surprised the heck out of me, and so you're going to see stuff too. You might be like, what? And I'll be like, I know. You know what I'm saying? It might be crazy. I'm excited, frankly. So all in all, um, I think the OSS is, is an interesting silencer, the HXQD. I think it's interesting. Um, you go read the review, because I uh, the, at least the conclusions, because I you know I put some more stuff in there about it. Um, left hand threaded mount comes with a, it has a, there's a TI version too. Oh, that reminds me. There was a guy on Arfcom. He asked, dude, is the is the titanium version as durable as the steel. And I told him, you know, I didn't know. I assumed it could it could be less durable, but the thing is because the blowdown is so high, 
or fast in these silencers. Um, it's dumping gas so quickly. I'm not sure the OSS silencer has the same the same um, drawbacks of heat soak or, or rather of of heat buildup as other silencers, but eventually you will get heat soak and then the titanium is going to get hot. But I'm not sure it needs as much strength as um, some of these other silencers just because of the way it works. So, you know, the, 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 the load case is a little bit different just because of the way the... the um, the pressure blows down the silencer. It's not. It's a dynamic pressure vessel, and it's not quite as. It's not loaded for as long duration. So I think that shorter duration might help. I'm not sure. That's a really good question. I told them um, not to lose sleep if you have a titanium version, but if you're really worried about durability, maybe steel would be a safe bet. I think you only save like four ounces switching from steel to titanium, so it's not going to be the end of the world. I don't know. I think the steel silencer is fine. It's not. It's not super duper heavy. And plus, like, you know, it's. You can put on it whatever barrel you want to, which is kind of neat. So, so yeah. So I hope I hope I did this one justice, guys. I, I know I went I went kind of fast, but at the same time, I think I spent like what at least an hour on it. I think I spent an hour on it. So that's an hour of OSS talk for you. Um, you know, I hope I hope this review. I hope this review showed you the gravity of Pew Science and what I'm trying to do. This is probably, I have to say, this was probably one of, if not the most important sound signature reviews that I wrote, have written for you. The amount of information that was given to you in this in this article and its consistency with the data set as a whole is so high and so large and significant that I'm not sure it's sunk in for a lot of folks, but this is basically proving everything we know we could do with PewSoft and the Science for Sound Standard. Like this is this is textbook Pew Science. Like if there's anyone who's doubting why we were doing things a certain way like why we te- why did we test on bolt guns first why do i show the pressure and the impulse why did i develop the suppression rating why do i talk about why do i zoom in on the waveforms why do i show you why do i talk about the minutia and like you know why did i develop the omega metric all of that was showcased in this review for you all the tools in the toolbox. And what did what did we build with it? We built a house that will never, never get knocked down from wind or rain, dude. It is this is solid to the point this this house is built on rock. And and there's it's it's basically, I think, really, if there was one review, if there was one review I could use to showcase Pew Science. I would show people sound signature review 654 because and and the references within it like the 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 articles that it references because it references the omega metric it references three weight bulk and testing for a similar silencer type and it references two other silencers comparison and it's a and it's a semi-auto review on the market team so with this article it it pretty much proves out everything It's almost like I could stop. I feel like I, I I feel like that with this because I feel like it 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 has done it's this article did the effort justice the, the these results because no not only of, for all the reasons I just said but also because no one has ever shown you the data to back up all the stuff they were claiming about the silencer and it turns out the silencer works and now you have like factual analysis to prove it so i'm proud of it uh, and I'm, i think i talked about it for such a long time because i'm really proud of it and i'm and i am really busy um and i'm tired and i'm burned out but i want to take the time to talk to you about this because i 
I worked hard to get to this point, and um, I think you're seeing that it's worth it. So thank you to everyone who supported Pew Science because this would not be possible without you. And I understand that a lot of people don't like OSS, and that's I can tell you, like I can tell you in my analytics, like the amount of people who read the OSS review versus the amount of people that read the Surefire review, it's it's not even the same sport, guys. Like it's not even it, like the analytics pale in comparison. Like not not nearly as many people at all look at the oss data because they're like oh i don't care about oh i heard those are loud i don't really have that i'm not it's not a clone it's not clone correct i don't care but i'm like that's fine but i want you to know like how important this data is it's like not even it's it's actually insane i actually surprised it's surprising to me so there is a guy there's i do want to shout out his name i think his name is derek he used to work for Sig, I think um, he um he's a silencer guy, industry guy. He's a long he's a long time industry guy, and he um he said on Arfcom the other day, someone someone was asking. They said, "Hey, what what's a good place for no BS silencer data silencer reviews?" And he said, "He said Pew Science. It's the best. There's no second place." And um. That was really cool that he said that, and I and I um, I'm confident enough to say that he's right. There is no second place. So, you know, I appreciate the support, and I will. I'm gonna all all, all the the people that are, you know, just continue to do it wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna save them from themselves, dude. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help. You're helping me help you. It's great. It's a community effort, and uh, we're all going to win. Rising tide raises all ships. Okay, we're going to go on topic two at a time of, I don't know, where's my, I don't even know where my recorder is. Here it is. (laughs) Time of one hour. Uh, 16 minutes and 49 seconds. Okay, topic two. Oh, I'm just being silly with this one. Fanny packs. Yes. (laughs) Are Are these not in style? I think they should be. They're not. I uh they're so versatile. I think they look good, frankly. Um I got a I have it on my desk right here, actually in front of me. I really oh, I'm gonna grab it really quick. Just bear with me one second, guys. Yeah, I actually dumped all the stuff out of it. Besides my wallet, because I was gonna I took a picture of it. It's an Eagle Industries ERB. I think it's called ERB. Where's the tag? Hold on. E R B dash five. Oh, hold on. It's like the tags folded. One second, dude. I don't know. E R B dash something. It's green. It's Ranger green. Um, I love it. It's probably one of the. I haven't been this excited for like. Uh, thing I bought in a long time um who uses I don't know if you guys have used Eagle Industries stuff I they make gun cases too um I don't know some of you old guys that are listening probably know about them I, I I've used it for a long time I, they have it's great quality I I I had been looking for a holster for a while and I you know I have an old Eagle Industries MP5 soft case holds three mags I it's one of the best gun cases I've ever had and I just I, when I I remember when I bought it like 10 12 15 whatever years ago and how incredibly good quality it was I was like oh my god this case is fantastic and I still use it all the time and um I've been looking for a holster for my FN my FN 509 compact tactical my baby and I I love this gun and I'm carrying it now and there's a lot of good options for holsters. There are, and I, I just, I actually just now got a light for it. I got that little stream light TLR, TLR seven, a tiny little pistol light fits really well. Just got in the mail today, this evening, slapped it on there, took a photo for you. Had to use a little number two Picatinny insert. I forgot the, I forgot what they call the insert. I think it's like an insert. There's a special name. Maybe it's a rail piece. I don't know what it's called, but there's a little, they have different ones for different sizes for different guns. Anyway, I use the number two. The instructions said to use a number one. That doesn't work for the compact. 
you got to use the number two anyway. The Streamlight's cool. It fits well. It's black. I need a brown one. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I got to look cool. That's number one. Back to the fanny pack. I love it. This Ingle Industries thing. I was thinking to myself, there's a lot of holsters. I don't know what holster I want yet, but you know what I can do? I can put this gun in the fanny pack. And um, I love it. It's nondescript. Didn't get a fancy camo pattern. Okay, I just went, I went Ranger Green. It's nice. Okay, it has three pockets, dude. It's super simple, three pockets. Little pocket on the front. Put a little silencer in there, put a flashlight in there, put a truck key in there. Perfect, dude. Main pocket, put the gun in it. Maybe I put a spare mag in there too. It's big enough for that. Maybe something else in there if you want. Whatever. I put the gun in there. It's basically the gun. The gun is the riding solo in that. And then a little back pocket there. It's, uh, it touches your body. So I have a little. Um, I, just, I, I like to put my little tiny Magpul plastic wallet in there. It just holds cards. You know, it's got my credit card and license and concealed carry license and all that stuff. A little little card. It's like one of those little minimalist stupid wallets that you wish you had a bigger wallet because you always like but then you realize you don't need a big wallet anyway it's one of those so but it's super flat and the key is the reason i'm telling you that it's super flat so it, it doesn't impinge upon your hips and your body you know what i mean okay so it feels good because it's not bumpy against you when you put it in that pocket that's behind the gun yeah so i love fanny packs dude it, it is it as quick to draw from as a holster absolutely not dude it's not a holster it's never going to be like that, but um, but they're convenient. I can almost always have a gun with me, no matter what I'm wearing, what I'm doing, where I'm going. I mean, within reason, right? So yeah, I'm way more likely to carry a gun if you can actually carry the gun. I know that sounds stupid, but for me, I do a lot of stuff. Like I, I don't know about you guys. I don't know what your life's like, but I do a lot of different things, and um. I like being able to take my entire assembly off of me and put it in my backpack, like self-contained. It's got my wallet. It's got my gun. It's like, it's all, it's a silencer. It's all in there. It's all just a thing. It's a little bag. I guess it's like a woman would use a per, like a little purse, right? It's like, okay, well, we can't carry purses because that's weird. So we have a fanny pack, whatever. So yeah, um, you know, go to the gym. I'm wearing it from the gym or from my truck to the gym. I get in the gym. I Put it in my gym bag. Change. I'm working out. See my gym bag with me. I finish my workout. Put the fanny pack on. Well, go to my car. I'm strapped. You know what I'm saying? Put it. Put it on when I'm headed out. You know, no, don't worry about have to worry about a holster or stability. If I'm wearing gym shorts, which I'm wearing all the time, great for the grocery store. It's a great accessory, man. It's frankly, it's I don't know, I don't know why more people don't use fanny packs. I don't, I love it, dude. It's so practical. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm, I was trying to remember how much it cost. It's like I don't know, like eighty bucks, ninety bucks, something like that. Almost a hundred dollars for this piece of green canvas. But um, zippers are nice. It's it's high quality, dude. The 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 zippers and the material are nice. Um, the buckles nice. It's fine. It's. It can adjust. It's like it's not fancy. Probably gonna have it for a long time though. It's dropping the bucket for that. I think you can keep it forever. So it's awesome, dude. I had the but I had the MP5 case from Eagle Industries for like 15 years. Why wouldn't I have this for longer? If I'm wearing it, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'm running out of steam. Topic three. <laughs> time of one hour. 23 minutes and 26 seconds. Okay, guys, I am dying here. Um topic three. This is important though. This is important. Huge Pew Science welcome to some new corporate supporters. It really means a lot. Discrete Ballistics, now out of Wyoming, formerly New Hampshire, uh, and Dark Horse Tactical out of Nevada. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm honored. And all, of course, thank you to all the, the new consumer members of Pew Science. You guys are awesome. You're making this happen. So, okay, so first thing, Discrete Ballistics, David Stark, the owner, David um last time he was in texas in san antonio we had dinner um my lady and and he and i had dinner uh we ate some great mexican food he's a he's a great guy this dude is serious about making it making his ammo guys he is and he's he's going to great lengths to be self-sufficient as a small manufacturer in the space which is no easy task for ammunition i can assure you of that 
it's awesome to see people pursue their dreams dude like he's he's definitely an entrepreneur and it is really inspiring he packed up and moved his entire operation and family his business everything he moved across the country to wyoming from new hampshire dude you heard that go west my son <laughs> saying he told he did he sure did um, now, Discrete Ballistics is a member of Pew Science, which is really great. You know, I you know it's funny. I use David's ammunition in my 300 blackout testing, and I've done that since the beginning. I actually I I buy that ammunition from Discrete Ballistics. I don't like I buy it directly from him. Um, just so you know, so that that was purposeful use. Like I I wanted yes I wanted to support his business. Because I knew him before, but also I wanted to use quality 300 blackout ammunition that was consistent. I've I've tested several different kinds, and he was he's his is pretty good. It's pretty good. So so yeah. So I just wanted to give you a background there. So if you see David around, tell him thank you for supporting Pew Science. I appreciate him. Also, Dark Horse Tactical. Uh, they are a law enforcement, military, and civilian training center in Nevada. They are, and I think they do a lot of law enforcement training. Uh, you can go there. You learn from instructors. They have shooting classes, uh, shooting tactics classes, I think. I know they do concealed weapon permit classes, too, if you're just a person wanting to do that. Uh, I think they probably teach you anything you want. I think they have a class schedule on their website. Um, yeah, Dark Horse Tactical. So, yeah, shout out to them. Glad they're supporting the effort. That's really nice. That's really great of them to do that. So, thank you. To, to David at Discrete Ballistics, thank you to Dark Horse Tactical. Thank you to all the consumers who just threw your hat into the ring. I have not emailed you yet since we've last spoken. I have not. Um, I've been so extraordinarily busy. I, I'm, I need to clear my inbox out. I just haven't gotten to it. So thank you to everyone who supports with a membership. It does, it does make a difference. This is the largest effort in characterizing suppressed small arms in history. And so you're, you're, making it happen like i i couldn't deal with that you do without you so yeah i feel like this is all for you so thank you and thank you to all the listeners of the podcast it's really cool um thank you for listening that's so great even on days like this where like i'm I'm super out of it like i know i'm not sure how this is going to sound but i i hope you enjoyed the episode (laughs) i hope you enjoyed the oss talk now i hope you learned something make sure you're subscribed to the podcast okay and please share it that would help. That would help us grow more too. Okay. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and I will talk to you folks again soon. All right. Bye.